Oh, yeah. Mm, there we feels go. good. It's the canned music. Good to be back. Can they hear that out there? Can y'all hear the music? <laughs> Somebody dance. Somebody dance. Y'all Let's dance? go. There we go. Yeah. We got some dancers. Oh. Nice. Here it is. Love it. Uh, Memorial Man. Day weekend. That's right. It's been busy. It's, it been, been, it's busy. been a month since we've done a podcast. It has. Grand it's been opening. A while. Mm-hmm. Do any of y'all out there already listen to our podcast? Anybody? There's a Hey, hey we got a couple people. The other people are like, I don't even know who y'all are. Yeah. We just want a free cart. Well, yeah. it, it is called Fishing Not Catching on YouTube. Yep. It's on the check road. it out. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can check it out. Whenever we get to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah whenever Matt decides <laughs> to edit it and upload it, sometimes it takes a little we bit. We need some more help. Well, hey, first off, thank y'all for coming out. Yes. Holy smokes. Greatly appreciate it. You guys are amazing. It's so cool, like, all the support that we've had since we've opened this store. And many of you have been in here several times. Like, I begin to recognize faces and names and it's really really special so thank you thank you thank you it's, it's really cool it is really cool to like finally meet all these people and yeah like you said like we're actually recognizing and remembering these people right and try, trying to remember names the best we can but yeah it's been an exciting exciting like past couple of days it has it was cool having a relationship with everybody online and then bringing that online relationship to real life that has been so awesome yeah, yeah. for sure well, we are. Uh, I think most of you are here because we're giving away a beach cart. Yep, it's like a thousand dollars worth of stuff <laughs> and, and surf rods and, and surf tackle. Yeah. Yep, and Every, sand spikes. Literally everything you need. You could leave here, go straight to the beach, and go fishing. You're ready, but well, you are going to have to go buy the the cut shrimp and your bait. All that's right? right. You do need at least <laughs> that. So, um, if, if why don't we just kick this thing off, right? Why don't we just go ahead and do this thing? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's All do right. It. Are we ready? So what we're like, gonna are we do? Ready for it? Because I mean, like, I feel I feel the anticipation out there. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah, so we're gonna do it. this. Like when y'all entered through scanning and everything it just puts y'all in a list and so you have a list and every name has a number so emily's going to tell us to pick a number between one and 178 178. 178. so 178 of you entered into this drawing wow i think you're all here why why don't we let somebody from the audience pick it should we do that Uh, i don't care sure yeah Yeah. right there come on you who who are we looking at we need a number between one and 178 (laughs) give us a number (laughs) yeah you yeah right pick a number between one and 178 no pressure. 16. She said 16? 16. Okay. Was it 16? Is that what she said? 1-6? Okay. Yeah, 16. Okay, that's Heather Gasky. Heather, Heather Gasky, are you here? Have to be present. Have to be present to win. Heather. Heather. Bueller. We're, <laughs> no. Okay, Heather's not here. Okay. Heather's not Go, here. Oh, another right. number. Still got a chance. How about you? Another number. Yeah, right there. Green shirt. Pick a number between one and one hundred and what seventy-eight? One sixty. One sixty. Going high. Good, 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 good job. Okay, one sixty. That's gonna be Bob Parker. Bob, Bob Parker. Parker. Is there a Bob Parker present? <laughs> yeah, we got a winner. Bob Parker. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Bob. Appreciate it. There we go. What's that? Uh, what's the game show? Bob Barker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the price Congrats, is right. Price is right. Yeah. Congratulations, I mean, man. I love watching the price it. Is yeah. right. That was amazing. And y'all are meet and if you, so, yeah, if you hang out here for a minute, when we're done filming this, we'll take some pictures and do everything outside. So thank awesome. you. Thank you, We guys. appreciate all of y'all coming out. Yes. Y'all you, can definitely hang around you and can. shop and watch us do this podcast and everything else yeah, but we, we, thank you all so much yeah appreciate it i guess we're gonna dive into the podcast that's yeah. right yeah we're gonna Let's talk about some stuff we've got a we're live on beach bum outdoors yeah, uh, what's up, facebook guys? as well so appreciate y'all tuning in there thank you. yeah first thing i wanted to talk about and i might make matt cry here but oh. uh he uh choked on a cobia <sighs> what <clears throat> two weeks ago now i you know it's funny i like i'm driving around and i still have thoughts of that cobia <laughs> Getting getting off of my hook, like I'm still very very upset about it. Yeah, that was brutal, man. And, and see, and, and so I have to explain something. So if you're listening to this podcast and you don't understand what that means, like uh, first of all, cobia they're pretty dumb fish. It's not, and they're cool to catch, but catching one from the pier is very difficult. Right. It's a very hard thing to do. And it's become way more difficult because there's just not as many of them migrating down the beach. No, anymore. there are not. You do not see very many cobia, and there's so much competition on the piers. Like, first of all, the chances of actually seeing a cobia, slim to none, mm-hmm. you know, from the pier. Second, even, like, getting an opportunity to throw your lure in front of its face, slim to none. You right. know, and then actually getting that cobia to eat, slim to none. So, like, yep. you know, very rare. But... 
Uh, why, don't you, why don't you start telling yeah. the story, Brad? Let's, <laughs> let's set the stage here. So <laughs> typically, Gulf Shores Pier gets a lot of jacks. Yeah. And it hasn't really been the case this year. But Navarre Pier has been getting a bunch of jacks. There has been a few cobia. So yeah. Matt and I decided that we were going to go to Navarre Pier trying to catch jacks was was really our main goal. Right. Joking, of course, joking around, up, man. What's like up, we up? might see a cobia. Right. Like, joking around. Like we're not. Like, gonna see we a got cobia. cobia jigs tied on. Yeah. Mainly to throw jacks. But right. so we're hanging out, and uh, there's not really a whole lot going on. There's a ton of ladyfish everywhere, and so we're messing around playing with ladyfish. And there's this one shark that keeps swimming by. And at Navarre Pier, you can actually target sharks. And you can keep them if they're legal. And, and this shark, it, it's an Atlantic sharp nose, which is delicious. And it's a probably what, like three and a half, four foot? Yeah, pretty small shark. You, you know, it, it looks like a cobia. Dark okay? in color. But it just yeah. keeps swimming around. Like, yeah, and so, so it's we hanging out. Screwing around with it. And so we ended up rigging up a shark rig and cutting up some ladyfish. We're pitching it at the shark, and it's usually scared, and it'll swim off. And an hour later, it'll come back by. We'll pitch something at it, and it'll swim off. And then, like, Forever later, in our delusional thoughts, we're leaning on the rail, and here comes us, same dark little shark. <laughs> and when, and I, uh, when I first saw it, I kind of had that feeling, because it had been a minute since yeah. the shark had been around. And I was like, oh, it's a cobia. And then, like, so I, like, I freaked out, and I ran over to my rod to, to throw at it, and I went, oh, it's that stupid shark. Yeah. That and, was my exact thought, mm. and I put my rod back down. And so I grabbed the, the cut bait, the ladyfish, and I pitch it out there. And it swims right up to it. It noses it. It like wants it. And but it's I, a pretty it, big chunk of ladyfish. I'm like fish. a 12 year old kid <laughs> behind Brad. I'm like, jig it, 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 it. I'm like, he's going to eat it. <laughs> and he wanted it. If that ladyfish piece would have been smaller, I think it would have ate it. It, it wanted to. And yeah. then so this goes on by, this goes See, on yes. for. It felt like forever, but probably like, I don't know, 15 seconds. Yeah. And then Matt's like, dude, that's a cobia. So Matt grabs his jig. I'll let you finish the story here. Yeah. So I realized it was a cobia. So I finally throw my jig at it. I jig it once. <clears throat> Dang, cobia eats it. I start to set the hook. And, and here's the thing. Like, cobia have really hard heads, like really hard mouths. And you got to drive that hook. Mm -hmm. And I made a mistake. Like, I, I hit it like I would hit a king mackerel, mm -hmm. you know, like just real hit, real quick, like, tch, 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 which that's what, you know, with the king, that's why you're trying to drive that treble hook. This is just a J hook. I should have just given it one good wallop, you know, but it just wasn't in the right mind space. I just, we're well, not thinking, expecting that. To well, no. Right. And, and you just, you kind of black out mm -hmm. on it. Like, isn't it weird? Like if you get an opportunity like that, you just kind of, you lose your mind. Like you don't really, you're not really focused and locked in on what you should be doing and you kind of screw it up. So I set the hook wrong. Fish runs, pulls a little bit of drag, mm -hmm. like a little zzz, and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's it, hard to watch. There goes my heart. I, watched, I saw the video. It was very, absolutely. I'm still upset. Mm -hmm. Like just because you're not going to get many of those opportunities, and people don't understand that. That like that is so rare because it, that was a legal fish. Mm -hmm. Like I've caught two cobia from the pier in my life, and they've both been very small, you know, relative to how big cobia get. But this was a legal size cobia, not giant, but legal, <clears> which would have been amazing. Like, and the thing about it too, when you have an opportunity at a fish like that, as soon as you see it and as soon as you like feel that fish, you already have like the picture in your head of like you holding the fish. Like, I'm, I'm already sending that photo to Brandt. Like, You're like, this fish yeah. is already dead. Yes. Yeah, like, I mean, this is a done deal. Like, I'm already so jacked up. It's a big up deal. And ready to yeah. rub it in everybody's face. And, and, then it, and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. Well, you seem to have some really oddly good luck with Hook and Kobe on piers. I, well, I'm, I am uh, two for three, yeah, which is pretty right. good. That's pretty good odds. <laughs> well, I mean, seeing as how like Navarre Pier only caught three this year. Really? Yeah, something like three or four. Yeah, it, like, was, it a was a lot. I mean, that's really good odds. Yeah. You know. Mm. Mm. It hurts, man. I'm, I'm still very, very sick about it. it have y'all lost any fish that have just like sat with you for a really long time? Not th I don't think anything that like sat with me for a while but i've definitely lost some big fish like offshore where you're like i wonder what that even was you're like you i'll never know you don't not is that going on ice huh is that you going on ice? on ice buddy yes. uh, okay. buddy you're my, my man. man thank you he knows thank what's you. up <laughs> <laughs> buddy just, he wants to be on the podcast yeah, i know so it's a, i know i know we got <laughs> <laughs> we have to have buddy not on this podcast we, we'll sorry. do it i mean we we don't ever yeah. the, so all right let's talk about this okay all right so our podcast booth has turned into the catch-all <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. It, like we're sitting in basically an office, a storage room. Yeah. Uh, we probably a should liquor store. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the uh, the kid the kids corner. You yeah, know, we put our kids kind in of here. Style, yeah. yeah, like so we probably should have added like an office in this 
you know, space yeah, somewhere. Or, I don't know, but because like it, there's just so much stuff in here, and I, and that's kind of demotivating a little bit. It's like mm-hmm. I don't even want to go in there and yeah. set up. So, yeah. but we, we will. We're gonna, we're gonna get it fixed. We have ordered a building. Oh, if, we oh we have. Yes, oh, we've right. ordered a building. We've ordered a like building. A, uh, like a whole building? A building? <laughs> like, like, what did I hear about like this? A, a, a big shed. Who paid for this? <laughs> Your brother. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> a big shed. We've ordered a big shed that's going to go out back that okay. all this is going to go in. Okay. It's going to be air conditioned. So that's going to be oh. our, our work. The work. Yeah, shed. so when we get in right. the orders, instead of having to enter it all in here, gotcha. everybody, we'll everything can okay. go out there. That makes sense. We'll, have to, make this we'll quit having better. inventory all over the place outside this door, and then we can work on turning this into an actual podcast right. booth. Okay, cool. All right, so that, that'll be I don't good. know when that's coming, yeah. but yeah, or your uh, camera is on top of uh, <laughs> shelving. <laughs> it's on a shelf, on a folder, on top on of paperwork. A and on I, a I see top. some hot, hot sauce. sauce down there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got the paper. Kind of we got some extra some BBO napkins, merch, uh, sunglasses, a, a Pompano map thing. Like it's just yeah. <laughs> just a range. Yeah. Like where did that even come from? I don't know. I think people just bring stuff in here, and if we're not here, I mean that's pretty cool. It's 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 neat. Oh, that's our area too. Is it? Oh, it is. It, it sure is. I think so. It looks like it. It looks well, like Fort Morgan. Yeah. Down that way. It's oh, pretty cool. amazing the stuff that people drop off in here it for is. us. And like the other day, when I after I hurt my leg fishing, somebody came by the store and and brought me medicine and left it in here. After you, yeah, uh, really? I wasn't that's here. So I was I wasn't here. Was that, it opioids? I don't know what kind <laughs> yeah, of medicine yeah. it was. But medicine. Yeah. <laughs> I just all I know is that. Uh, I was told that it was up here and then it was gone. So I'm like, hmm. Mm. Little Florida legal medicine. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So you hurt yourself fishing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I haven't had a chance to see that video, but I knew, I saw you hobbling along Man. for a period of time. Mm-hmm. So ha- tell me about that. Like, how, how yeah, did it was that just happen? a normal uh, Brant injury because you're, pull, pull you're old because you're old because i'm getting old okay. I, mean, I just you're turned i just turned 39 oh yeah that wow. is old mm-hmm. what are you what are, what are you uh, i will be 36 okay this year i think brad is is I'm are you even 31 30 oh you're 31 he's okay. a baby gotcha wow i remember those days yeah when i could back when i could go day. back <laughs> in the day when i could go surf fishing without hurting myself <laughs> it, you know, fishing injuries are a real thing i'll mm-hmm. talk about mine but so tell me about it what? yeah uh well it as y'all know, this time of year in Fort Pickens, uh, the hammerheads come in, and Brad and I both have gotten an opportunity to catch a hammerhead. Y'all have caught some beasts. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I was like, all right, uh, I heard some good reports. We'll go out there and uh, see what's happening. And so I get out there. I was, like, feeling good that morning, got out to the beach, and realized that I forgot my sand spikes. And I'm like, man, that is like the one thing. Like you, you already walked out of the I, beach. I walk, got all the way out there, and I'm like, man, I forgot my sand spikes. That's a long walk, too. It was, dude. Uh, and so I'm like frustrated. Uh, although, although it ended up working out because I did catch a jack, and I caught some Spanish, and I set my beach card up to, I was like, I'm just going to have to use my beach card as a rod holder. Right. I've done that and, before. Yeah, and because I forgot my sand spikes. So I, I filled my cooler up with water to make it heavier okay. put my cooler yeah. in the beach car good thinking right i'm glad you thought ahead right and so uh <laughs> put my put my rod in there and in the first shark that i hung i was like all right sweet got a shark caught him as a black nose which there's a lot of those out there right now yeah. well then I, I set my bait back out and i'm just sitting there and all of a sudden the one hits it yeah okay okay didn't even have i, I did turn my gopro on the when i hurt myself and it i was like so excited i turned it on and like knocked it over <laughs> and like uh, such a clutch yeah and so the uh the rod goes off and it is like it's Bent him over. it's yeah. him and then it turns my whole cart over okay oh, and i'm uh... like running after this rod and i'm like so excited and i'm like trying to grab it while it's the rod is itself is going in the water. Unfortunately, my GoPro is face <laughs> down in the, the sand. sand. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, so this is like the, the the real story that happened. And while I was like trying to grab my rod, I felt my calf muscle just like pop. Oh. And I was like, oh man. At first, I thought I had a cramp. Right. And I was like, well, maybe uh, maybe I can just walk this one off. And that was not the case. Dang. Nah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So time out. I yeah. You were hammerhead shark fishing out of your beach cart. Yeah, <laughs> first, first, first mistake. Not ideal. Well, uh, What's up, McCoy? The the the. <laughs> I was I wanted to hammerhead shark fish out of my Deerfield sand spike. 
<laughs> but that didn't Hashtag happen. Deerfield. Yeah. You got the hat on and everything. I know, man. Yeah. I know. I know. And so so I you forgot them at the house or just forgot them at the I car? forgot them at the house. If oh, I'd okay. have forgot them at the car, I'd have gone back and got them. And nobody was out, out there on the beach that day that I could like borrow one from. So it was just like, got to use the beach. I mean, I was out there sure. to make a video. And yeah. Ended up catching a lot of fish that day. Like, yeah. it was a good day. But like that. Well, Pompano, Whiting, it's okay to fish out of your beach cart. Lesson here. No hammerhead shark. Hammerhead shark fishing. <laughs> Make sure you got a sense of yeah. And so the, the the hard part was, I don't know if you've, you've walked to the point at Pickens yes, before. I have, yeah. yeah. So it's a pretty long walk yeah. back there, back to your car. And uh, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't hardly walk. Yeah. So I was having to use <laughs> then the beach cart to, as like a crutch to like get back to my <laughs> cart. And it I'm was, sorry, I'm not laughing. No, it's, no, no. It was it, not it, funny. It was funny because it was the day that it was Tuesday, the day that the Blue Angels practiced, oh, and yeah. so there was ten thousand people. Oh, uh, they're and watching. So you. I'm like walking back, and everybody's like staring at me, and like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> not embarrassing at all. It was embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Brant. No, it was okay. You know, I so you talking about that reminded me. I, I was just in South Florida, and my axle broke on my beach cart. And like about 100, 150 yards from the access. So I had to drag my beach cart mm. with, with no wheels. Uh, about Wait, was this the Deerfield cart? No, oh, no, no, no. I, no. Uh, yeah, okay. I, haven't, I haven't started using that because okay. the store is stolen it for a prop. But, gotcha. Uh, Sounds like you need it now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to take it now. Yeah, because <laughs> I was like, that's a sweet beach cart. It is, it is super awesome. We need to sell them. Like, we need to figure out a way. <laughs> that, that, yeah. I don't know if we have we talked to him about that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can, you, can you do that? He's working on it. Okay. Um, he's trying to hire somebody to, to help out and then work on the pricing and stuff, too. So, okay. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, we've had so many people interested in it. I think it's like $1,500. Is that, isn't that what you said it was? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what it's it is. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. But, but it is a machine. Nice. Yeah. Like, that is awesome looking. Yeah. I, I think yeah. the people that are interested in it are like, yeah, I don't care. I'd buy it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty sweet. I would buy it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a lot of money. But, uh, you know, it'll save your back. It's worth it. You know, it can definitely cause issues. With your back, your lower back, your shoulder. Mm-hmm. It's very awkward, like... It is. Dragging beach carts. Yeah, I mean, so. I've been using mine that he sent me, and my six-year-old can drag it down the beach. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Because you it got, rolls it's so four, good. It's four wheels. So, four like, wheels, yeah. all right, so the biggest thing, like, rolling, even with these orange tires when you got two, rolling's fine. But if you have a lot of weight in that cart, you have to lift up on it. Mm-hmm. That's the hard part. Like, when you're dra- just holding that much weight, walking through the sand... It's pretty hard. Did you take your uh, How's it going? beach cart to the Keys, the bridges? I uh, wish. Because that no. looks like a long walk. Man. Well, I have like 100 kids, and so with all of our stuff, <laughs> yeah, you got no we space. didn't have any room to take a beach so, cart. So if y'all don't know, Brad just got back from the Keys. I did. And it looked like an awesome trip. Dude, well, you, you really smashed cool. the fish. You dude. had a very productive trip. Yeah, it was awesome. In the Keys. It was awesome. You, well, Can't well, complain. You, you caught your first, first tarpon. First Which, time putting my hands on a tarpon. That was a great video. Yeah. Like I, I love those just raw, like doing it yourself, Go, you know, just walking down. <laughs> yeah. you know, no like, shirt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 you were looking so oh good, bro. My God. So good. What are we talking <laughs> about? <laughs> uh, OnlyFans.com. No, right? yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, How's it going? That's your daughter. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I, can't, I, I can't even see her. <laughs> yeah. I, like, there's a glare right here. What's up, Matt's Annalise? Like, hey, Annalise. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's up, man? I uh, literally could not see her because she's right in the glare. There's That's one hilarious. thing about that tarpon video. I, I thought it was a great video, but I was like, why didn't you hold it up? Yeah, what was the problem? I, I so, thought the same thing. Did you drop it? No. Well, I mean, I dropped <laughs> it when happened? I put it back in the water. What happened, Brad? But no, so, again, I've never touched a tarpon. The <laughs> only pictures or videos I've seen of people handling tarpon are with gloves on. I have no gloves, and I'm, like, not sure. I don't know. This is my first time. I picked it up for the picture. <laughs> it's like a largemouth bass, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, I noticed, I did see a picture because yeah. you sent it to us, but yeah. like in the video, and I was waiting well, for that money shot. Did it shot. bite you? No, so I didn't have a third person shot from that. <laughs> we know. <laughs> my six year old was my cameraman. So you couldn't just like roll the cam- like you could have pulled a photo from that. You could just say, I could have hey, just Kel- thrown it. Uh, uh, yeah, I yeah, could have put say, the hey, picture Kelton, up. you know, like put, turn it on the camera and let him hold uh, it. Yeah. You had a person there. I know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I felt a little let down. I, 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 they, well, I mean, obviously, I got to see you called it, and it looked I, like a it, decent little. Target. One of the best videos that I think you've made because of how like raw it was. I really yes. liked that video. Well, thank yeah. you. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I just wanted to see it. I know I that was that was a little disappointing in the video, but I mean, it was still a great video. I did get a lot of comments about that. Did you? I'm sorry. I'm sure you did. I'm sure people were like, I want to see the fish, but. Yeah. Um, Man. Well, it was, it, and it looked it like really a decent. It wasn't like a micro; like it was a decent little one. It was probably decent, I don't you know, know, 
two foot or something. No, that's, that's, not, that's good. I've caught yeah. them a lot smaller. Than yeah, that. no, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looked like they were going off. Dude, yeah, they were they're, rolling everywhere. I mean, you missed several, which is mm-hmm. very normal. I mean, even just hooking one and landing one's hard enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I thought so that was literally the first night we got there. Like, we were on this little canal, and there was a dead end street next to us, and so we were just walking down the street just to see if the water was even <clears> fishable there. And so we walked down to the end. It was like super shallow right in there, and I didn't see anything. And then we were walking back, and I'm like looking, and there's <clears throat> there was like this property that I kind of showed it in the video, but it was I ended up looking it up on like Google Earth. It's like eleven million dollar property. It's got like four <laughs> houses on it, and really, like wow. its own little marina. So I don't I don't I know, know if it's like one oh. individual or if it's like a something yeah. you can. Re- I don't I don't know. By the way, I think our cameras stopped. That's still it, recording. That oh, it's better. just showing that it's low battery. Yeah, okay. Our battery may die. Yeah, which we, is we okay. got another one. We'll change it out. It's yeah. okay. But so they were rolling like right at the entrance to their little marina, and I was like, oh crap. I was like, Kelton, we got to go home. <laughs> so we like ran back to the house, got a rod, came back, and I was throwing the. Uh, the um, the NLB and mullet in the swimming mullet and what they call yeah. it something like that and so they were it's like on top it? of the water yeah isn't it? okay yeah and so they were eating it and I don't know if it was a little too big or it was weedless so maybe I just wasn't getting the hook that way sure um, so I had I think two or three uh, hookups on that and they spit it and then so we went back to the house and just got the three inch paddle tail uh, with the exposed hook and ended up. I think I got one eat and missed it, and then like it was almost getting dark. Courtney was like, "Y'all gotta come home." Like we're, yeah. we're trying to have the dinner. wife has spoken, and so Kelton, get your butt home. Kelton was like, "All right, you can have one more cast." I was like, "All right, cool." He goes, "No, you can have two. And I was like, "Okay, thanks, yeah. <laughs> my kind of fisherman." Thanks, Kelton. So I make I make two casts and nothing. He goes, "You can have another <laughs> one." <laughs> and so it's literally Glutton for punishment. Literally my last cast, and we were gonna leave, and it was like halfway back, and he choked it, and I was like, "Oh my god." Thing. Like you could hear Kelton in the background. Like oh, Kelton he was, was he super was fired, excited. He was fired up, yeah. And so we went back every day after that. And they were only Never there one other time and really? they wouldn't eat. Wow. Because really? Kelton really wanted to catch one. So we're gonna try to get him one. Sure. I've Dang. always wondered what makes them roll like that some days and then you know, it's it is weird. Yeah. They're weird fish. Yeah. Very weird. But there are giant tarpon everywhere. Down well, there. I saw okay, so mm-hmm. when, you, I, when I was watching your uh your bridge video. I, I, you could see them, mm-hmm. you know, moving around, and I, I, you weren't even trying for them, so I assumed it was just not yeah. Even no, worth and it. then people commented that too, like, why didn't you throw the big tarpon? I, I, I'm like, I, I, well, I did. Do you want to watch an hour of me throwing a tarpon and sure, they're not eating? Sure, like, yeah. I'm not I mean, gonna put all that. It's not like yeah. you're not gonna throw no, it. When, when I could tell you, you were like them. ignoring them, I was like, oh yeah, that, yeah. it's yeah. just not even worth it. So I had bought um, a lot of guys down there use live crabs for sure, the tarpon, sure. and so I bought a few crabs which are very expensive, they're like four dollars a piece. It's like the croaker. Yeah. And so I bought a few crabs, and uh, I soaked those out there, hoping for a tarpon or maybe a permit. Didn't even get touched. Um, I freelined one and, like, pitched it at the tarpon, and they weren't interested. Threw swim baits at them, nothing. Hmm. One of the guys I ended up fishing with, he said they'd hooked a few, but he said it was usually <clears> early, <throat> early morning or late afternoon, hooking them on swim baits. Oh, uh, okay. Everybody else said you need, like, live mullet or which, even, uh, like, even like a mullet head or something. If they're hanging around the so, um, um, I, so I talked to my dad about that. Okay. And, and he was, I was like, because I told him I was going down there and I told him okay. about Brad's tarpon. We need to, you need to explain your dad. Yeah. Like, oh, people, yeah, yeah. people listening to this podcast have no clue. He, he is the tarpon, pure tarpon master. Uh, he's a, He's caught. Well over a hundred tarpon right. off the pier at, at uh, like Oklahoma and the bar, bar. yeah, um, but very very famous. So he said that when uh, they were younger, they would go down there, and uh, he said you got to go at night. He's, it, when I've, I've seen, when I've seen the charters, mm-hmm. they're they're out there at night. Yeah, that's what I've seen, and the, like from videos and yeah. stuff. It's just so hard It'd be to, tough like, to make a, a YouTube video. Yeah. Right. right? No, I get it. Like I want to catch one, but I want it to be on video. Sorry, to mm-hmm. hold my hand, didn't, didn't mean to caress you there. Brad. Got a little Bud Light yeah. action going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> night videos are really difficult. I, I know it's just not even fun because mm-hmm, yeah. there's no there's no scene. Right. Say, right. I mean, obviously you can light yourself and you, there's light <laughs> on you, but <laughs> yeah. Courtney just walked by and made a face. Oh, us. I did see her. I did see her. Um, but it's I just may, not. It's we not may have to hit one of the bridges and get out there like early, early when it's still a little mm-hmm. dark and see if we can catch one and then uh, just bridge fish. But yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't like going out at. Like midnight to go fishing. You, uh, yeah, not my cup of tea. You still no. had a great day on the bridge. Absolutely. So I was a little like disappointed for a while. So th- I'm, it, I'm, gonna, I'm also disappointed you didn't show off the yellow jacks. 
Because those are really pretty fish. Oh, Brad, yeah. what are you doing, man? Because I, 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 like, like I was your... watching that video. I'm like waiting for you to like <clears throat> show Because don't they have like these blue squiggly lines and a things? That, you know, like yeah. these weird things. They're I mean, like cool. you could you could. So show I have more. actually started. So, so Dad, come, Brad. I need a Brad. cameraman. Was, yeah. No, 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 no. I, we do no, need no, a no, cameraman. No. I was going to talk to you about this because I've been watching. Uh, I've been watching a lot of the Australian guys, especially like Caddy yeah. and those guys. And something I was like, I really like how they show the fish off to the GoPro. And ever since I saw him do that. Every fish I catch, I don't care if it's a hardtail, I show it off to the GoPro. Yeah. And I was like, it just meant, like, I wanted to see it right. every time they catch a fish, no matter if it's small or big. Right. And the GoPro actually takes really good third-person footage if you clip it to something and, like, show mm -hmm. the fish off that way. So I've started doing that with everything I catch. Yeah. I was slacking. <laughs> I know. I, I was really... out there by myself. We ended up crushing fish. I mean, because you, you, you were, like, whacking them. And, like, yeah. just you, you would, like, see them for a second, and then you toss them in the cooler. I'm like, man, this yellow jack. Like, that's cool, yeah. you know? Yeah, hey, Brad. You were, in, see Brad. you were in pure rat mode, not a YouTuber. Yeah. I know. And some, I, like, I still just, like, get awkward filming around people that, like, don't know. This is a funny story. So <laughs> <laughs> so I meet these two dudes out there. Oh, and man. so we're fishing. And Can you I'm, tell the story on the podcast? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> you run into a hater? Let's, 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 no. pause, let's pause for a second. No, this is funny. So <laughs> Remember, we're live, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> this is a funny story. So I'm fishing with these two dudes. I'm wearing a Beach Bum Outdoors hat. And he's like... Hey man, those guys ever get that store open? I was like, Yeah, it's open. You ought to come check it out sometime. <laughs> He's like, Cool, cool. Yeah. He's like, We go to Navarre sometime. We'll come check it out next summer in the area. I was like, Sweet. And then, like, later on, um, I don't remember how it came up. Like, I'm wearing a GoPro, like, fishing and talking to sure, myself the whole sure. time. And, like, yeah. it never clicked with them. And then, <laughs> so later on, he was like, So, what do you do for work? <laughs> I was like, well, I do YouTube. Just opened a tackle store. <laughs> Beach you may have heard of it. <laughs> He's like, what's your channel? I was like, Bearded Brad. He's like, oh, I've watched your videos. Yeah, that's I was funny. like, that so the funny. hat, the GoPro yeah. didn't give it away. The, the beard. I mean, yeah. did, were you, were you covered no, that no, all? I, I was like hanging out. Yeah, so it was uh, funny. He was like, oh, yeah. He ended up, they, make, they live in uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, they make Cobia jigs, so he gave me one, and uh, they're going to come down to Navarre in July, want to fish with us, want to come see the store. Okay. so Sweet, man. They seem like cool dudes. Cool. They were, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you were interacting with them and stuff. It was cool. Yeah, man. You caught a lot of jacks, too. Like, we uh, did. You know. Some of the smaller ones. Yeah, that was fun. So it was. So when I first got there, I got out there maybe like, I don't know, 8 or 9 a.m., and you have to walk like basically to the middle of this bridge, which is like a mile walk to get to where the, the good fishing is. That's what yeah. I heard. But on the way out... Probably about a quarter mile. Hey, Courtney. Turn. The, I don't know how to do that. Turn you have the to get Corey. Oh. Uh, I don't know how to do that. I, I, might, I might can figure it out. It might be right here. Okay. okay. Or are we but too so low? like a quarter mile out. Um, Sorry about that. They were catching a few yellow jacks, and so I ended up stopping short. And uh, that's better. Up just to here. Yeah. So I stopped and uh, tried to catch some yellow jacks there, but I didn't catch any. The tackle store I went to ended up selling me a bunch of dead shrimp. Yeah, um, well, which I was really you you called them out, which I was yeah. like, oh dang, Brad! Like I had a really bad experience at that. Well, well, oh, okay. We won't say their name. I mean, okay. you already did in your video. If you yeah. want to, you can go watch. You can go watch Brad's video yeah. if you want. We won't say their name. I, I what happened? Yeah. Well, so first they ended up selling me a bunch of dead shrimp. Uh, which I wasn't going to say anything just from that. But then also the way they were treating their customers, I was like, you've oh, got to be kidding I me. I forgot that you sent oh, okay. that. Gotcha. So this guy is in there trying to tell this guy that works at the tackle store a story about his son catching his first snook. And it's this big snook and this and that. And so he starts with the, the workers behind the counter on his phone. And so this other customer walks in and he's like, man, I see all stuff posted online all the time. Dude never even looks up and goes, yep. And he's like trying to tell him about the snook. The guy literally never looks away from his phone. It's just like cool, cool. Sounds like we need to open a beach and then outdoors. Somebody, <laughs> somebody calls. What's up, dudes? We got we What's got up? some guys out here. What's yeah, up, hey, fellas? You know, hey, go Vols. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> he's fired we, up. Man. We've actually got people listening to our live podcast, which I think is awesome. It so is we appreciate cool, it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, guys. Yeah. But so while I'm also in there, the phone rings, and he's like. Yes, we got live shrimp. I'm like, that's a fun phone call, huh? Right. Like, yeah, we just opened a tackle store, like blah blah blah, sh shooting the stuff with them. Sure. And he was like, he's like, yeah, it just gets so annoying. He's like, everybody comes in here and wants wants me to shop for them, wants me to walk around <laughs> the store. I'm like, that's your like, you're a salesman <laughs> at a like, tackle you're, you're, you're store. You're customer service. What do you expect? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> These people Awful. are coming from out of town oh, and don't know man. what they need. They need you, man. So Come on, after baby. that, I was just like. 
I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna tell people not to go there. Uh, yeah, I get well, it. Well, it really it. frustrated me, sure. especially now that we have a store and, and that's see e- that. exactly what we don't want to be. Right. And also, the Florida Keys is like the number one tourist area in the whole state of Florida. Like you're gonna get people you that have, need yeah. your help. Exactly. Right. Like you, know? you need to be prepared for that. They're just and I <laughs> I went in December and I talked to. Um, what do you need? Uh, you need a bummy stick? It's for our giveaway winner from Grand Opening. Okay, Wisconsin. come on, get it. Come oh. on, Emily. Is it in here? Yeah, it's right here. Oh, sweet. Okay. We so I just grabbed one off the shelf. Right here, awesome. Yeah. Do we not have any on the... Uh, we have well, what? We Y'all don't have to whisper. There's 15 like, others. It is, it's it's not that big <laughs> yeah. of a deal. And, you, and you're showing up yeah. on camera yeah. and everything. You're like, totally you're interrupting right. our podcast. Uh, Jeez. Come on. Yeah. In front of millions of viewers. <laughs> but I went there in December, and I talked to Chris V about... Um, some different areas because he fishes down there a yeah. lot. Oh yeah, and he specifically said like you might not want to go to this tackle store. They're kind of arrogant. The, well, that, I went the, any, the one. That, yeah, okay. I went anyways because it's the nicer one. Like it, mm-hmm. it looks the nicest. It's got the nicest building. They have whatever. Mu- they have multiple locations. No. Oh, you should have told um, him you were a YouTuber. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> like that, they would have cared. Uh, right, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they was, probably would not have liked it. I will. No. We're going back next month, and uh, we we're actually will not going go. back next week. We, yeah, we got like two weeks. We can no, have two dude. weeks. We leave on the eighth, and you're taking your boat. It's right? not even the first yet. I'm confused. Well, uh, buddy's going. Yeah, it's buddy's, going. Buddy's oh, yeah, going. Take yeah, buddy's boat. taking buddy's boat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh snap! Yeah. We're trying to yeah. get Matt to go, and he's like, "Oh, go to work at the tackle store." Well, it's not. It's not all about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't need Whatever. a leader right now. <laughs> Spill <laughs> the beans. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So you had a good time. Yes. It was yeah. awesome, dude. I would, oh, okay. I would love to buy a house. I, I do have to. Did you uh, get to eat a yellow jet? Yeah, are, are delicious. They as good as everybody, because I've always heard not as good amazing. as mutton snapper. Oh, really? Mutton uh, snapper is now my new favorite fish, outside of like pelagics, like tuna and stuff. But as far as like a snapper, like inshore fish, um, it was, it was freaking amazing. Well, yeah. so good. You also got to fish with with. Uh, Stan's fam, the yep. man himself. Wearing a shirt. Stanzik, and, uh, yep. Rocking as a Nick Stanzik. Famous. That, oh, yeah, was, that, a that really was really cool. Video. cool. That yeah. was fun. Did you meet yeah. his dad? Or did, was it no, some, I didn't meet his dad. I haven't, I've watched the other two videos. I haven't watched that one yet. Yeah. It was really cool. So they, the goal was to go out for um, yellowtail snapper and mutton snapper. And so the way they fish for the yellowtail snapper is pretty interesting. They, So they get a chum block, and they let it thaw out a little bit. And then they mix in some oats and some sand and make like these balls. And so they'll throw <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> So they throw out some Wait, of the chum. What, or whatever. what do they make? Balls. Uh, <laughs> the way you enunciated that, just you know. But so so they'll like throw the chum out in the water and stuff. Yeah. And they have a lot of um trash fish. Like they got parrot fish and some um what's the other one? Is it not a Chud, is it? Chud? What's up, y'all? How's it going? What's going on, guys? Um, Thanks for coming in. What's the other trash was that? Not a chud, a, <laughs> a chub. Chub. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you laughing? No, at? It's called a Bermuda chub. Yeah, I'm gonna so back have, away from the microphone. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <They> have, <laughs> it's, it's a Bermuda chub. So they have parrot fish and chubs, <laughs> and those are like their trash fish. And so when you're throwing out the chum, those come up. <laughs> you don't want then, a chub to come. <laughs> You don't I'm want to sorry. snag a chub while you're out there, and so we're gonna have to dial it back, dial it back here. So the uh, the yellowtail snapper hang out underneath all that. So what they do, y'all are so immature. <laughs> so no. I he did, I, I but so, so what they do, they a terrible story. They make oh. these they, <laughs> they make these balls to get past the chubs, and you so, <laughs> and so that you take I can't, I can't. <laughs> you take your bait. Like you have a little, uh, okay. like a little jig. I'm with you. <laughs> and you have like a little piece of shrimp or a little piece of squid, and you you wrap it, <laughs> you like stuff it in like you're making a dough ball. Yeah. And then you throw it in, and that helps it sink past the trash fish. Okay. And then when it gets down past the trash fish, you just kind of pop it, and that will <laughs> release. Stop it. <laughs> just, I've, I've heard a commercial fisherman doing that. Yeah. And then, so now your bait is below the trash fish, and you catch them that way. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, very smart. And here, and it is it's incredible what fishermen come up with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like how they fig- like, figure Who decided uh, you needed oats? So that out. I know. That's seriously. a commercial fishing, fisherman trick, and I've heard them do that. And it, 
commercial fishermen are on another level. They really are. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I mean, they well, got to figure it, it out. It's life, or, yeah. life or death. Yeah, literally. For I've, uh, and it, it's crazy. Yeah. This is like the longest fifteen percent battery. Ever I, I out. think we're. I don't. I think we're out. <laughs> I'm very impressed. No, well, no said, if, it, if we were out, the battery uh, would okay. be off. Okay, it does. I did see. I do see the record. Yeah, yeah we're good. Okay. But um, um, so they said you do have to have current, like. They were fish all below, but there wasn't enough current, and so they just weren't eating. We ended up catching, I think, three or four. So they they wouldn't um, eat, or mm-mm. really interesting. We we did the yelltail snapper for a couple hours, <clears throat> and then we ended up pushing a little further out. Which out there, at most, we were like eight miles offshore in three hundred foot of water. It's just different. Man, man. It's perfectly clear blue water. Beautiful. Eight miles. It was insane. We were just in like a little bay boat. Like his boat, it's a pretty sweet boat. I think it was like twenty three foot. But it basically has no gunnels. Like the gunnels are probably like six inches. What kind of boat was it? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look. It so, up and, and this see. was Stan's boat. Yeah. And um, so we pushed on out for the mutton snapper, and so for them you have, um, when they do their um, line to leader connection, they put like a little loop in there so they can hook mm-hmm. a weight on it. Oh uh, yeah. And then from that weight, they had probably like twenty to thirty feet of um well they, they would probably do like 20 foot of mono and then on the end they would do like a couple foot of fluorocarbon mm. and so you end up with like almost 30 foot a liter out there wow and uh we were dropping some ballyhoo and basically just drip drop to the bottom and then just drift and um so we the first drift i ended up hooking a shark nice and i got it all the way to the boat like thinking we had a fish and then of course because mm. i'm I didn't ask. I don't know why I didn't ask, but I'm pretty certain we were using like 30 pound. Okay. So I got the shark all the way to the boat on 30 pound That's leader. That's impressive. Um, but so we drifted a few different towns, finally got on one spot and just started smoking the muttons. We didn't smoke and we ended up with four or five um, between the six of us, um, but they were pretty good size. That's ones. cool though. Yeah, man. That's yeah, awesome. that was fun. And, First time and, catching a mutton snapper. So, and they, you, I've watched some videos of land shark doing it. They use that long leader specifically for mutton fishing, mm-hmm. right? Is it because they're just so dang finicky? Yeah. Is that why? Like, yeah. you, you have to have literally 30 foot of yeah. leader? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Why? And then, so you either, um, I guess because they're vision. Did he explain it? No. So, that, so I'm terrible at asking uh, questions. We would do guys. that for, all right, so offshore uh, out of our area, three, four, five miles, you, there's some really good mangrove spots where you get, like, the 10 to 12-pound mangrove snappers. And we would do that for them out there. And it was, if you used a short leader, they would shy away from the braided line. And so we would use like a 15 foot leader to catch the mangroves out mm-hmm. there. So I don't know. I just, I, I've just seen them do yeah. that. Like I've seen mm-hmm. uh, land shark and mm-hmm. deer meat for dinner. Yeah. Do that. And I'm like, I think it makes a difference. Man, with I mean, I, mean fish. I, I, I yeah. trust them. Obviously, they know mm-hmm. what they're doing. It's right. just like, man, that seems so excessive. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. to, to you would have think that much. It yeah. works. Yeah. yeah. But so, uh, like, once you get it up, you get the weight and then. You can either pop off the weight and reel the less rest of the line into the reel, or a lot of times no, by, by that it. point the the fish is pretty much full of air and floating, so then you just hand line it up yeah. and, and flip it in. But it was a really cool experience getting to fish with them, and uh, that marina is insane. Is that Bud? Like, we're gonna have to go when you do. Uh, they're they're family are owned tarpon. It, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Since like the fifties or sixties or something. Oh, crazy. There's so many tarpon like everywhere. Yeah. And so we got back to the marina, and he just, like, grabs an old belly who starts smacking in the water and is, like, feeding them out of his hand. And wow. That's cool. I was like, please let me fish here. I know. Like, just let me nope. hook one, man. Come on. It's like, can't do it. Yeah, that's probably. Liability, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah they get like he said, they've had kids come in there and hook them, and you'll, they'll have tarp and, like, jumping in people's boats. And what? He's like, yeah, we can't. We can't do that. That'd be sick, man. Mm. But a uh, good spot for maybe a Brant Petrie so, GoPro drop video. Yeah. So what are y'all? Yeah, that would be. So where, what are y'all all trying to do in the Keys? you got plans, Well, goals. Brad and I have talked a little about it. So I'm, I've am i never done the bridge fishing down there. Right. And so I really want to catch a yellow jack. Yeah. And so I'm going to try to do that. Well, it sounds like, like that should be easy. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it's not. Maybe. So uh, I've heard talking to people down there, like it's very hit or miss, but like when you find them, you can catch like a ton yeah. of them. The thing is, and so like... Call a bunch. And, and they get... Uh, they don't get huge, but they get bigger than that. Don't yeah. They? Can a get, little I've bit. I've seen some decent ones. Yeah. yeah. The thing, so like, I think I'd started talking about it, but I got there like eight or nine in the morning and I stopped a little bit before because they were catching some yellow jacks, didn't get any, moved further down closer to the middle of the bridge where, like, Ryan and Victor have told me to go. And I'm fishing there and not getting anything, not even really seeing anything other than, like, a few jacks. And then those guys that I was fishing with, they had left to go get more shrimp. They came back, and they were like, you got to go, like, a little bit further. And literally went, like, not much further at all. 
And within like 30 minutes, there was just life everywhere. Did you oh, win? Oh, nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. He won a bummy stick. From, Thanks, that, man. Was that from Grand Opening? <clears throat> yeah, Grand opening? cool. Okay. Well, awesome, man. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Good we do a picture? Yeah. We're doing a picture live on the podcast. Look at there. Nice. It's pretty cool. That's Thanks, cool. dude. Hey, yeah, if you need a reel to go with that, we got plenty. Pin yeah. slammer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I didn't really catch my first fish until like well after lunch. Uh, so it was a long time of like nothing. And even when we found, so we had seen a couple schools of jacks come through and we caught a few and then we hadn't seen it. The current switched and picked back up. And so we weren't seeing anything and we we're just going through like each section of pilings just like blind casting an NLB and seeing if maybe we could find some more jacks and ended up having some yellow jacks follow up. And we're like, oh, crap, there's yellow jacks sweet, here. Sweet. So we went and got the shrimp, and that's when so we started can you catching not, those. So can you not catch them with artificial? So I caught one on a gulp shrimp. I mean, that current is ripping so fast through there, you would have to have something pretty heavy. Gotcha. Like I, I was throwing a voodoo, too, and it's just not getting down quick enough. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if we have something a little heavier, but – sure. Um, you could probably catch them on a – I didn't try it, I don't think – a three-inch NLB and with the, one of the heavier jig heads. Mm-hmm. You could mm-hmm. probably get them on that maybe. Gotcha. So that's the biggest problem is getting down to them. Yeah, because that current is so ripping. I definitely want to do some of that because that looks fun. And also, I like finding really random, like, weird spots yeah, to fish. Yeah, that, that's kind of so like your jam. I, I want to I find something. Like Brad's tarpon. Like like, like that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's like cool. That. Like, so I want to cool. find something cool like that. So yeah. that's going to be another – Maybe you can go find that, take them to that spot. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they'll be I'll there. Take you so. back there. Okay. Well, yours will probably get a million But there's, pro- there's probably so many. I bet there's a lot of other spots like, like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the Keys, there's got to be. The mm-hmm. problem, like, so really with the Keys, there's not a lot of land-based options. Like, Unless you're trespassing. Unless, yeah. Like, there's not hardly any beaches. Like, there's right. a, a few small beaches, but it's mostly, like, by boat, you can do so much more. Sure. Yeah. Other sure. than that, it's bridge fishing. So what are y'all going to do with the boat? Are y'all going to try to go do some stuff like mutton snap- snapper fishing? or? I would like to try that. Um, Did y'all get some numbers? Gonna, or? No, I'm going to talk to Nick and see if he'll give us, like, I don't want to <laughs> I mean, ask that, I mean, for I mean, numbers. I mean, but, for mutton numbers, that sounds pretty, yeah. like, yeah. Well, I just want to ask for, fighting like, words. I know, man. <laughs> well, so he made a joke. We were fishing, and we started catching the muttons. He's like, we're going to have to check Brad's phone, make sure he's not marking my spots here. <laughs> Did he know you were coming back? No, uh, I, I don't think I told. I've told him like he knows now. But okay. I, at that point, I don't know if he knew or not. I got you. I'm gonna ask him for just like some some yeah. general. Yeah, I'm sure he'll guidance because it's public. I'd also like the blue water's right there. So well, that's what I was gonna like say. To Can try we to go chase agents? some weed lines and find some mahi yeah. or troll for some. Yeah, I mean they catch the the tuna and wahoo and all that. Well, Sell without ha- without having numbers, I think our best bet is to like look for weed lines. Yeah. You know, because they do get a lot of pelagics in mm-hmm. close. So. And there's a ton of grass down there, so it um, shouldn't be too hard. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get some general The grass is bad. I, you know, I was just fishing mm-hmm. some on the East Coast, and you can't beach fish yeah. right now on the well, East Coast. Well, coming here, too. I made a video the other day, and there's grass everywhere 20 miles out, 25 miles mm-hmm. out. That sucks, man. Yeah. It's so depressing. It's mm-hmm. like fishing's good, everything's good, summer, and then it's like, bam, mm-hmm. grass. Yeah. So grass, grass, grass. Was it sargasm? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, you know, they said it was bad this year. And I, I, honestly, I don't know if it's any worse than – it. I, maybe, but, like, they get it every year <clears throat> on the East Coast of Florida like that. They get bad – sorry, it was bad last year on mm-hmm. the East Coast of Florida. Like, I remember seeing all the pictures and stuff. I don't know if it came in this early, but they were covered up with it. Yeah. Well, we got it horrible last year. Yeah, yeah. well, we dealt with gra- – like, cause, and we got all of it last year. We're like, we yeah. got the spaghetti grass, the sargasm, and June mm-hmm. grass. It was, like, cycling through. We couldn't ever get rid of it. Yeah. It was very annoying. No bueno. Yeah. Mm. But, well, uh, didn't, didn't you have some questions that uh, Melanie well, – you know, Yeah, well, so so well, my wife, she's she, super she, awesome. She prepared for us. She nice. uh, she definitely prepared for us. And, uh, she we, we don't for, ever prepare for these things. We used to. We, we you know, when <laughs> we started – The first few, we, yeah. we would always have notes, notes. And then we were just like, hey, man, you yeah. ready? We're like, press yeah, play. Just wing it, man. So she went through and, like, came up with a bunch of topics, but we've already covered most oh, of them. Oh, have we? Yeah. Okay. I so it you. was like, yeah, really cool. Um, but uh, let's see if we've got any questions here. That and she went through the comment section to find so these. So thoughtful. Yeah. Um, so which, which we should probably do that. We should yeah. ask some of them if any of them have questions. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, we could we could have won. We had like a thousand yeah. people here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so here's one that apparently we get a lot is uh, do sand fleas work better than shrimp for pompano during May and June? It depends. Yeah. What would your answer be? 
It depends. Okay. <laughs> it, like, what, what, some days yes, what? some days okay. no. Yeah, it's just, it, it is weird. It's um, I, I have had more success this year with Sam Fleas mm-hmm. than I have with Trump, and it, even I've had more success fishing side by side with you, and you've seen it too. More success with Sam Fleas than Ghost Shrimp, which is weird. F- which is very. Uh, odd, this is something funny too, and I get this question all the time, and I guess because I talk bad about them when I when I catch them, but it, I get the. Why do you hate catfish so much? Oh, yeah. And the reason why is because we actually, uh, in our area, like, we don't realize how many people actually target catfish sure. around the country. Sure. And so, like, it's a, like, a highly sought-after fish, but we always talk bad about it. Right. And so that would be because the saltwater catfish is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. quite the same. Yeah. A, a not, not really good table fare. Mm-hmm. They will hurt you. They, yeah, they can literally yeah. make you sick, put you mm-hmm. in the hospital. Absolutely. They tangle up and destroy uh, all of your rigs. Yeah. Like they, they make a mess. They There's swallow circle hooks. I can go on. And, you know, because like it's them. funny. I, I've gone through these cycles because they they're not around much in the wintertime. And then you know in the wintertime you don't catch anything on the beach. So right. sometimes you're like, man, I, I would be happy with a catfish. And then literally the first catfish you catch, you're reminded <laughs> like, yeah, I know you're like, <laughs> okay, I forgot why I hate these things so much. They're just yeah. so yeah. they're just so stinking. See you guys later. Thanks for coming Thanks in. For coming in. But uh, going back to the sand flea thing, what I usually tell people, and this is with the bait, the rigs, the fish gum, fish bites, whatever, like I like the more variety you can have, the better. So yeah. like when people are picking colors, I'm like, honestly, the color usually doesn't matter. Some days it does, though. So if you Good. like if you're going to get five rigs, get five different colors right. and see if you find a color that seems to get work better. If you're buying some fish gum. Buy the different colors of fish gum. See which one ends up working better. Same thing with right. bait. Try your shrimp. Try your sand fleas. If you can get ghost shrimp, try that. And just try all these different options until you figure out what's working that day. Because it, it literally will change day to day. Absolutely. Some days they want green. Some days yeah. they'll eat everything. Some sense. days they won't eat anything. So and just, if I had to, you know, this is not scientific and this is not proven, and I don't know that you could, mm-hmm. but I think the only, in my brain, the only thing that could factor that is watercolor. Mm-hmm. Like because yeah. you know pompano are sight feeders, and what primarily like and and it makes sense because they are moving so freaking fast. Mm-hmm. You need something because you know like you can catch them on jigs, right. and the, and, the, and there's obviously no na- there's nothing on there other than, sure. other than color. Like that's right. it, and so that's the only thing that's going to catch their attention. And they're bright colored, and they're just moving so freaking fast. You have to have something that's like what's that. You know, like that gets them like, okay, mm-hmm. what, what's going on here? And, you know, the things that they eat are so colorful. But the w- reason they would key in on a certain color, the only thing I can think of is just the visibility of it. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if the water is a certain stain or certain whatever, there may be a certain color that shows up better for whatever reason and just catches their attention. Yeah. Is I, don't, I think that's the only explanation, and that's just me coming up with something. Yeah, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. So, yeah, yeah. Now, if, if for for all of these customers that come to Beach Bum Outdoors, buy their surfish and stuff, coming down here on vacation, and I've been getting asked this a lot, and this was another one that Melanie wrote down that we apparently get asked a lot, is where like when I go out onto the beach, what am I looking for? Where do you want to set up? That is the hardest thing to explain. Yeah, because uh, you know, even when I was guiding. Um, and everybody wants to know that. Like yeah. you're right. Like this, everybody that comes in here, they're like always asking that question. Like, where do you set up? It's so hard to know. And that, and the reason, and obviously, like learning to read the beach is what is, you're going to have more success. And it's not even just learning to read the beach to know where to set up. It's just that you know what you're looking at, so you can pick up on patterns. You know, so that you know, like, oh, I'm casting in a rip. Oh, I'm <laughs> casting in a hole. Oh, I'm casting on a bar. Oh, I'm casting on the backside of the bar. Like you just know where your bait's going, so that you can pick up. Okay, that's where these fish are feeding, and you can focus on that feature and pick up on the pattern. And that's where I designed to like came up with the um, zone awareness thing. And when I made that video like five years ago when I was guiding is because I was, I got tired of trying to explain. It got frustrating, not because I I don't mind telling people it's just frustrating because I couldn't make it make sense. Like that was frustrating to me. Like I would try, I would be standing on the beach and I'd be like, okay, this is this, this is this, this is this. And then once beach, outing they're not going to pick up on that like it just is not going to click so you it just just takes time so i came up with okay anybody can do this anybody can go out to the beach if you have one or two setups or three you know that's why we have so many put them at different distances if you only have one you know leave it in one distance for 20 30 minutes if you're not getting a bite move it move it move it move it until you get a bite Mm -hmm. and then put it back you just keep track of where you're putting that bait and if you have multiple it makes it easier because you put one deep one middle one close and try to find the fish. Yeah. You know, anybody can do that. Like, that's simple, basic. Don't worry about reading the beach. Don't worry about where you go. 
any section of beach will carry fish because it's so fluid. Those fish are constantly moving. They're going to favor certain things. They're going to be more likely to funnel in an area based on water movement. But anybody can stagger their baits. Uh, would you move up and down the beach if you sit for an hour and don't get a bite? If when I <laughs> when when I was more uh, ambitious, uh, got it, got it. <laughs> I was gonna say me, no. <laughs> not now. <laughs> but when I was guiding and I was doing it to make it make money, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Before you were a YouTuber. <laughs> if, yeah, if you're willing lazy. and really wanting to put in the effort, yes, it can be beneficial but to move to find those different structures. E- even 100 yards. Like, yeah. just mm-hmm. like, okay, they're not here. Let, let Specifically me more for like widening than yeah. Pompano. Uh, yeah. Pompano yeah. are just cruising they're down the moving, beach. moving, yeah. Um, but that moving is going to be more beneficial for widening, hitting these different holes because the widening are going to hold tight yes. the holes more. Yeah. Or, or even like redfish and, or yeah. trout, and, mm-hmm. flounder, you know, any of those other fish, really. And so sure. when I was guiding and it was like, Okay, it, you it, had to put people. You felt pressure. Yeah, oh, put absolutely. And now, fish. like, I'm just lazy. I'll just sit yeah, there. Yeah, no, I, I'm I chilling. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like such a fair weather fisherman I now. I get out to the beach at like 7:30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've noticed that about Brant's videos. It's like you know, mine. I'm, really. I'm, I'm starting. It's like you can't even see. Uh, and then Brant, it's like nine o'clock in the morning. Like <laughs> sun's high in the sky. Yeah. Well, when I wake up in the morning, I gotta. I, I, you I need a process. I need like 45 minute coffee. Cold time, shower. You know? Yeah, I know. You have. You do have to have time for coffee. Mm-hmm. Like it is. Like a process. Like you I up. can't like grab a cup and down it and just go. No, I gotta relax. Well, you gotta poop. For a minute, you know. Yeah, yeah. well that. Too. Well, that too. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if I drink coffee and leave the house, <laughs> I'm gonna need a bathroom pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. And, and I would rather just relax. So you know, I, it and hey, it works out usually. Like like. I catch more fish no, mid morning well, yeah, than you, I do any. You well, obviously are catching fish. Yeah, I see, I yeah. see it in your videos. I'm like, Renee and Brant's out there at nine o'clock, you know, just oh. catching fish off the beach. Thank you. Well, guys, it's gonna wrap it up here. I think yeah. that I think that was a good podcast. That was a really good podcast. We had fun. We gave away a thousand dollar beach cart and yeah. and gear. Oh, yeah. I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> What are you never lost your head? What is going on? Uh, hey. Yeah. Mm. Everybody have a good time out there? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. What's okay. up, guys? Okay. Yeah. Go yeah. balls. Absolutely. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. The voice of freezing. Hey, what's up? What's up, buddy? How's it going? Oh. <laughs> These voices really annoying. Are they a little bit? Oh, he's just a little bit.